Hey folks, it's Mike here. We are just wrapping up our last big show of the season. We are finally home from Shadow of the City, which was in Jersey. I'm really hoping we get to do that again. Shadow of the City was incredible. It was down at the Stone Pony. Don't miss it next time it comes around. Speaking of incredible things, today is a special episode day. This is our first surprise special episode, but it will not be the last. So make sure you are subscribing on iTunes and SoundCloud, where we'll have more of these unannounced cool features coming in the future. In August, we were in Los Angeles to put on the first of a series of events we're calling Audible Impact. The show is in partnership with the Grammy Museum, Toyota, HBO, Pandora, Lyft, and the Ace Hotel down in Los Angeles. Basically, what we've done is put together a bunch of entertainers, activists, and politicians all on a stage and had them participate in a panel discussion that was all hosted by Ronnie Cho from MTV. The people you're about to hear from are Garrett Kennedy, Mayor Lindsay Horvath, Sage, a local LGBT advocate and activist, Ronnie Cho, the host, Jess Bowen, our old friend from the Somerset, and of course, Jack Antonoff. The panel was hosted in front of a couple hundred high school students from the local area, and we are so excited to bring it to you today. Any feedback you have, you can feel free to reach out to us. We are at Ally Coalition on Twitter and Facebook. Let's start the show. Um, So we're going to introduce the panel. We've got a great group of folks here, uh, but I want to, one, just say we've got a lot of um, great questions. We've got a lot of great thoughts here to share, and I want you all to be a part of it. So we've got a couple of roving mics, if we can share those. Yeah, they're up there. So if you have a question you want to ask the panel, please don't be shy. Um, we don't want to make this formal. We really want to hear from you and make this an interactive kind of a thing. And also, throughout the presentation and the conversation we'll have, we encourage you to share this on this thing called Twitter. You guys familiar? Uh, auto, hashtag Audible Impact. So be sure to share your thoughts with your followers, and um, and we can get started now. So the first panel uh, panelists like to introduce is Garrett Kennedy. Garrett Kennedy is an award-winning journalist covering pop music for the Los Angeles Times. Kennedy has covered everything from the death of pop star, pop titan Whitney Houston, hip hop homophobia, to the resurgence of boy bands and female MCs. The Ohio native and proud Ohio State Buckeye. Uh, was a founding member of the campus chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists and was, in 2012, was named the Emerging Journalist of the Year by the National Association of Black Journalists. In 2014, The Advocate featured Kennedy in its annual 40 Under 40 list. Please give him a hand. (laughs) Next, we have the Honorable Mayor Lindsay Horvath of West Hollywood. Mayor Horvath has a long history of civic and social justice advocacy. She has spearheaded policies to make West Hollywood uh, an age-friendly community uh, to better serve residents of all ages, uh, fighting to protect LGBTQ rights as a board member of the Victory Fund and the No Hate Campaigns, standing up for survivors of domestic violence, and, and fighting for the advancement of women and girls as a global coordinator for the One Billion Rising Campaign. Please welcome Mayor Horvath. Next, we have Jack Antonoff. Jack is an American musician and songwriter, best known as the lead singer and songwriter of Bleachers and lead guitarist of the indie rock band Fun. He was previously the lead singer uh, of Steel Train. With Fun and his sister, Rachel Antonoff, he formed the Ally Coalition to advocate for LGBTQ equality. Welcome, Jack Antonoff. Next, we have Jess Bowen. Jess has toured the world and released multiple records with established rock band The Summer Set since 2007. She's a top role model for aspiring female drummers, love female drummers, and an advocate for LGBTQ rights and anti-bullying initiatives. Thank you, Jess. And finally, we have Sage from the LA LGBT Center. Sage is one of the ambassadors for the Los Angeles LGBT Center. They were chosen as an ambassador because of their passion for the center's mission to empower, heal, and advocate for the LGBT community. Sage, welcome to the panel. Settled here. All right, so the first question, uh, and again, we've got some mics here, and we encourage you guys to jump in at any moment. Don't be shy. The first question I want to raise for the group On June 26, 2015, the Supreme Court had ruled 
that same-sex marriage bans were unconstitutional uh, and opening up marriage equality for everyone. It was a big moment in American civil rights history and a big statement, I think, um, that many of us will remember. I want to ask, maybe just go down the line here, where were you when that announcement came and how did it impact your life? Garrick, we'll start with you. Uh, I was actually, uh, I woke up to the news, uh, me and my boyfriend, we were in bed and both of our phones had so many texts from friends and families and we're both from really conservative parts of Ohio, so it was a really emotional um, moment for the both of us because we didn't know if we would ever be able to get married where we're from, so that was, that was the reaction that we both had, was thinking about, oh, we can actually do this if we want to, back in Ohio, not that we're rushing to get married, because... <laughs> You know, <laughs> but that, that was how I reacted to it. It was, it was it was a really huge thing, but I just thought about home and just growing up and how I never thought I'd see that day. Great. Mayor. I'm actually from Ohio originally, too. And wow. uh, I thought about my family, but I woke up um, at 6 a.m. I had friends calling me from D.C. and they were like, Lindsay, this is so exciting. And uh and I realized it was going to be a day that I would remember for the rest of my life. And I knew that through the whole day. So it was really exciting um, to, to just know that every conversation I had is something that uh, is going to be with me forever. And um, being mayor of the city of West Hollywood, which has really been at the forefront of the conversation for marriage equality and LGBTQ rights forever, um, is it was pretty exciting and uh, we had a big rally that evening there were thousands of people there and I was asked um, to be the political speaker um, kind of like today I think and um, and uh, so I knew that was like kind of a really big speech. And so if you've ever had to give a really big speech and gotten nervous, multiply that times like a million. And that's how I felt um, because I was so excited about this historic moment in history. And it happened because we all cared enough to say something. So I'm really, really glad for that outcome. Um, I was in bed and I was sleeping. Um, I, uh, I always, I always um, been very open that I, I, I wouldn't get married until um, everyone could get married which doesn't mean I necessarily believe in marriage. It just means I wouldn't have done it then anyway. Um, but my girlfriend woke me up, and she, she was like, should we get married? Um, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, so it was uh, this hilarious uh, interaction. And then I looked at my phone, and there was like a billion texts. And I remember thinking, um, uh, it, there, it was just like a, a calm feeling for a second. Because I think whenever there's uh, any... any I issues where, where there's anyone in our in our world who doesn't have the same rights, which we still have plenty of those issues, and that's actually the second half of the day was, oh my God, this is the best day ever, and then it was thinking about trans rights and, and all the other uh, issues that were sort of next, which I don't know if that's a, a dark way of looking at it, but but it, a lot of people had that discussion too that day. Um, so yeah, that was, it started out really funny because it was this funny conversation with my girlfriend, <laughs> um, and then it was just like total joy, and then it turned into, which I think it was for a lot of us, a lot of conversations of like, okay, great, now what's what's next? Because um, that's what happens. You celebrate for a minute, and then you think about all the people that can't celebrate because, you know, they can still get fired for who they are. Yeah, and we'll get into this, kind of the other stakes beyond that. So, but I was yeah. really psyched. You were super psyched. Yeah. yeah, we get that. Yeah, Jess. We all seem to have similar stories as far as being in bed, and uh, <laughs> I was also in bed. I was on tour in San Antonio, Texas, and I woke up to my friends and my family uh, leaving me voicemails and uh, all the texts. I didn't pick up my phone because I, I was like, it's so early, why are you guys calling me? Um, so, uh, Do you think someone was dead? Because I did when I saw my phone. Did you? Yeah, yeah. well, I was wondering, my, my, my phone was, you know, it was so early in the morning, and, um, and yeah, so I, I just let out a scream, honestly. I was in a hotel room, two other guys in my band were there, and they were like, why are you, you know, they were upset that I just woke them up by screaming. And then uh, I started jumping on the bed, and I was like, I can get married anywhere I want to in this country now. So that was a really cool feeling, just knowing that I could go anywhere, you know, and, and marry the person that I love. I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually just roaming the halls, and I, and I saw papers on the wall saying, you can now get married, whether you're gay, lesbian, bi, trans, or whatever, you can now get married in all 50 states, I was like, it's about damn time. <laughs> I mean, not only for love, but you know, since we're in that national debt, I mean, you could charge for the marriages. <laughs> but really, I was overjoyed because a long time ago, I had a conversation with my grandmother saying, why can't, they get, why can't people get married? Why can't all people get married? 
Then, you know, she threw the big black book with the gold, <laughs> with the gold trim at me. <laughs> and I was like, just, just wait and see. <laughs> I didn't say that she would hit me, but I was like, just wait and see. <laughs> but I was overjoyed. I was like, finally, everybody can get married to who they love and just have that everlasting joy for the rest of their lives. That's great. So, Sage, we'll stay with you. Um, so help us frame the conversation today. Jack alluded to it a little bit in his remarks about now that marriage equality is a law of the land, uh, the LGBTQ fight for equality is done. We're all done. Is that, right? is that right? We are not done. We have taken the first step up many, many more steps. You can, LGBT, I don't know if everyone knows what the acronym is. It's actually kind of longer, but we're, I'm going to condense it. Lesbian, gay, bi, transgender, and queer. You can still get fired from work if you have a picture of, of your partner on your desk. They could say it's something else, but it's actually discrimination. You can still be put out of bathrooms if you identify as a female, but you were born biologically male, you're a transgendered woman, you can still be kicked out of public restrooms. Places are now charging that person who went to the restroom with a fine for causing others discomfort just for going to the bathroom. You, dressing rooms, there is discrimination. Even in regular high schools, those who identify as either male or female, those who are gay, those who are lesbian, those who are just androgynous, they fall in the middle. Or two-spirit, who are this, who they just are who they are. There's discrimination there. And we have so much more way to go. It's just that we finally had a victory after our long work, but that's just the first hurdle on many. Thanks, Sage. Uh, Garrick, I want to go to you in talking about how we've got a long way to go. It was just 10 years ago that Massachusetts was the only state that had legal same-sex marriages. So as someone who's covered the intersection of social change and culture uh, in your career, you know, what is it about this movement in particular um, that has made this movement unique, that has driven so much change in a relatively short amount of time uh, in the last 10 years? Uh, the biggest thing I think about is probably visibility. I mean, I think of when I was growing up with the dreams of wanting to cover pop stars or whatever, I didn't have anyone who looked like me, that was gay, that said they were gay. So it was a really big deal uh, a couple years ago when you know Frank Ocean wrote that letter or when you know, we have Sam Smith, you know, walk in his own truth and not have to have this big moment. It's just very nonchalant about it because that's how that's how I came out. I was very nonchalant about it because I, to me, and this is not advice to anybody, I just didn't think that I was special because I had the same uh, sex orientation uh, attraction. So I just didn't think there was anything special about me. So I just brought my boyfriend home to my parents, which is probably really reckless now that I think about it as I've gotten older and I've had friends, especially as, a, especially as black men, like the other people have had a lot of different um, experiences from mine, so I'm always cognizant of that, and I try to be really respectful to all of those um, stories. But that's, that's the biggest thing that I thought about was, you know, now we're at a time where we're seeing so many more of these images, and I think that's really important, especially for, you know, the youth who, you know, unlike me or unlike maybe a Frank or a Sam or a Jesse from, from um, Empire, we didn't have these images growing up. So now that we're seeing, that, seeing them and also seeing them be accepted by everybody, I think that's the biggest difference between what's happening right now versus you know, 10 years ago where we were. Uh, Jack and Jess, the artists on the panel here, I wanna ask you guys, gals, you've been really great activists and advocates for this community and I wanted to ask you of when there were moments where there's an artistic expression, a song, a piece of culture that changed the way you saw the world. You know, Garrick mentioned the exposure, visibility. Um, were there moments like that as, as artists that you uh, felt inspired by and you saw, whoa, this changes the way normal is or what is, what is true? Can I go first? <laughs> Um, there's been so many, I mean, it's funny because I'm 31, so when I grew up, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy's huge special, he had this joke about catching gay, yeah. and that wasn't a weird joke, you know, like, that would be, <clears throat> you'd be you know, fired and shunned now as you should, if you, like, that was just culture. That was also a time, I think, and 
lit, you, you almost can't blame them in a way because the, the government was telling us it was a disease. So up until what year was it? Does anyone know that they changed um, the, what, what year was it? Was it the 80s? It was the 80s. It was the 80s. So, so there was, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, before that, um, the government and, uh, you know, the head of whatever psychological organizations from the government said that being gay was a disease. So that was coming, you know, straight down from the top. If you were a therapist and, and you aided someone in, in, in coming out or anything like that, you could be fired. So you had, you know, big stars like Eddie Murphy, you know, being extremely homophobic. And that's just kind of the culture. And then all the way up to, I remember when Ellen came out on TV and, uh, of course, you know, it was a huge moment. It was really powerful. But looking back on it, it was like they had to make a big joke out about it. And she said she was gay and it got caught in a mic. Remember that? And then everyone heard and everyone was like, oh, my God, you're gay. And then literally after she came out, her show fell apart. Mm -hmm. And she had, like she lost her show because no one wanted to watch it anymore because no one wanted to see a gay woman on TV, which is absurd. Um, and then all the way up to like kids like calling things gay when I was in high school. I was... Uh, really made fun of a lot for being gay, which I'm not gay, but it, it, I had blue hair. And so I grew up in a time, this is the late 90s, where anything alternative was just gay, which is also completely absurd. Um, so so it just kept shifting, kept changing, and all these little things like, you know, Ellen being, being the first one. Sorry I bring up a lot of negative ones, but for some reason that's, that's how I remember it, is I remember a lot of like, because it's a positive thing, because what I'm saying is there were all these things that were very normal, like on a sitcom, it used to be normal to say things homophobic. And then just as time goes on, less one specific cultural thing that happened, I think it's amazing that those jokes are just not interesting anymore. They're not funny, they're not relevant. And we've sort of come to this point where we've backed anyone into a corner that would think that's funny or interesting. Like I'm sure you guys can totally agree with this. If you were at like a dinner table and someone said something homophobic, you'd, like no one would be interested in it. It would, they'd probably get kicked out of the party. And, and that was not the case like 10 years ago. And I remember very specifically. So culturally, I'm just so excited and amazed that um, like the verdict's out of the things that are not to be tolerated. Yeah, I mean, based on what Jack was saying, I, you know, I grew up in a very conservative part of Arizona. And um, there really was no visibility. You know, I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any peers. I didn't really have anyone in the media or even in the music that I listened to that was very open about their sexuality. And so to me, I didn't even, you know, I didn't have anyone to look to to like guide me. I knew that something was a little different with me. It was like, I know that I'm attracted to women, but I feel like I'm not supposed to be because I mean, it's not normal. And when you're in high school, that was when I was really struggling with it because you want to fit in. I think in high school, that's like the, the time that you just kind of want to blend in and, and be normal, whatever that is. And, uh, and so I kind of just went along with that until I realized that I was severely depressed because I wasn't being honest with myself and I wasn't making true connections with other people because how can you make a connection with someone else if you're not being honest with yourself? Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, there, there, it was almost like there's like a negative connotation like when I was growing up to, to being gay. You know, people would say it as a term of like, oh, you're, you know, yeah. in a negative way. Um, and so it's great to see that as a society, I think we're all changing. Um, no one really, you know, my friends don't use that term um, in a negative way. And so, I mean, it's really great to see that. So, you know, there's still a lot of steps to be taken, but I do think that we're headed in the right direction. It's also nice that culturally, just to add this, because I remember growing up, the, the, the gay figures that were accepted were like some sort of super stereotypes. Like in a movie, it would have to be like this, like, wacky version of a gay people as defined by straight people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> typically old, straight, white people who tend to define everything. <laughs> um, so it's nice that um, that's not the case anymore. And I think now we're seeing that with, 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 with trans people we see on TV and in the media where it's like, there was a lot of people, you know, when, um, when, when Caitlyn Jenner came out, um, everyone, John Stewart did an amazing thing because everyone wouldn't shut up about how hot she was. Like as if that was their way of being like, I'm cool with it, but it's like, congratulations, now you're a woman, you're totally devalued and people are only gonna talk about how hot you are, not that you won <laughs> gold medals in the Olympics. And that's, that, that's a, a funny thing that happens where it's like, it, it's part of the growing pains, but we'll look back on that in five years and be like, you know, we wouldn't as an entire country just yell about how hot someone is for no reason. You know, we're just doing that because she's a woman, that's the way we feel comfortable doing it. Others on the panel about cultural music art that made you think differently or 
maybe challenge your views. Anything? Anyone in the audience have a question? It's quite, so we've got a, some roving mark, mics here. So we've got a few hands in the middle of the room. Oh, hi. I'm um, Katie Thanos. I go to El Dorado High School, and I'm here with Mrs. Cavaluzzi. Um, it's so cool that you're in high school. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. High school is the best. It is, it is <laughs> Well, my biggest question is, like, our parents and grandparents were able to witness things like the civil rights movement and some of them even women's rights. But how do we, as young people, involve ourselves in this movement instead of just watching it pass by? I mean, it's beautiful to see this making a history, but how do we make ourselves a part of it? Well, I think I want to direct that to the mayor. We had this great conversation backstage about what to do, what we can actually do on these issues. So please. I love your question. It's my favorite question to answer, actually. Um, giving people actual, tangible things to do is the thing that's going to keep you hooked on this. You know, when I was in school, I was a nerd, I was totally outcast, and the good news is you can still be mayor of the coolest city in America. Um, so, uh, so, but I always felt like if I, if I was given something to do and I accomplished something, I was like, great, I'm gonna do more of that because that's what I wanna do, you know, whether it's to build up your resume to go to college or to make somebody else happy or make yourself feel happy, whatever the reason was. Um, and so I think uh, one of the things that was really important to me in becoming mayor and being a younger mayor, I, I'm told I'm the youngest female mayor in the country, but I don't know if that's true. Um, but uh, as part of our Pride Month this, this year in June, um, Mayor Garcetti and I brought forward uh, an LGBTQ youth action plan to make sure that every city in, the, in America who wants to wants it, we can give it to them and tell them how to care for LGBTQ youth in their own community. We give them all of the resources, we identify a lot of the priority issues for youth that were identified from the community to us. We never want to tell young people what to think. I mean, that's the most annoying thing in the world. Um, so, uh, but I think making sure that um, we actually gave young people things to do and become engaged is the most important thing. When um, I was working on, a, on the backlog of untested rape kit evidence in the city and county of Los Angeles. And um, I wrote a letter that I had, uh, that I literally gave to every person I knew. And we sent them to Mayor Villaraigosa and ultimately um, the backlog got funded. And, um, and so some of my friends who were not political at all did not care one bit about rape kits or anything that I had to say, quite frankly, but still signed the paper anyway, probably just to make me go away. They asked me, hey, you know, a couple months later, hey, whatever happened with that? And I said, well, actually, because you signed that piece of paper, the city of Los Angeles gave this many millions of dollars to clear that backlog. And I can tell you today that backlog is now clear because of that funding. And that means that women, many women, probably some men too, um, had the chance at justice just because somebody signed something. So um, your question is great because there are um, definitely ways to get involved and I, I try to be somebody who uses government to get more people involved. So I'm happy to talk with you after too if you like about all different kinds of things you can do. There's so much work to be done. Thank you very much. Sure. Great question. We had another one here, I think. You raise your hand and get you a mic. We have one. Hi, I'm Megan Clements, and I go to El Dorado, and I was just wondering, um, how do you guys think that the media can better represent the trans community? It's not all Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not, and I'm not being a hater when I say this, but she is just one of the many transgendered women. There's Jen and Mock, there's Laverne Cox, there's so many more, and basically now since Caitlyn Jenner has came out, Everything she does will be such a what all trans women, what all transgender women do. She's not. She's just a person like everybody else. A great person. I'm not knocking her down, but a person nonetheless. So it'll be more about education and going out and seeing everybody else in the world, and not just like let one person speak for everyone. I think it'd be nice too if the media could portray more um, trans people that don't look like. Uh, some super stereotypical version of a hot person um, because it, it's it's exciting to see that out there but at the same time it's like you know I don't I have to imagine that the average person transitioning doesn't have Caitlyn Jenner's resources and 
incredible hair and makeup always and it's just not a fully realistic vision so it'd be, it'd be nice um for both people who are, are transitioning and for people like me who are understanding it just to see more images of what it actually looks like in reality but that's a um something that obviously goes way deeper into issues with hollywood and the media but specifically for that just because it's so politically charged and so important and right now americans are learning about it and a lot of them are afraid of it it would be nice if it was uh, a bit more broad well, maybe I'll ask Garrett, as a, as a journalist here, where are those places to find more realistic, more diverse examples of trans people, of LGBTQ people, where they're not stereotyped and they're not um, you know, put in the, these different boxes? Uh, I think the first thing to do is uh, reach out to the community. I mean, we, and I say we by the media, we have... Um, sort of a way of treating everything like a trending topic. So because Caitlyn is so hot right now, we only want to continue to write about Caitlyn. And I think the, my, my fear is that the conversation will stop once the show is ran through its cycle and we move on to the next thing, because that's, again, what the media tends to do um, on a regular basis. That's, that's how they operate. They operate on what headline is the hottest right now. And so it will be great you know, to reach out and start looking at those. What are the other stories? What are the you know, how many murders this year have there been that's not really being covered because we still want to write about how hot Caitlyn is or how hot Laverne is in, you know, the new movie and things like that. So that's that's what I really want to happen first. And I think starting there is a really great jumping point. And it sounds so simple, but it's like the hardest thing for the media. It's like you would be cra you would you would be surprised to hear in newsrooms like how these conversations happen where it's like how many ways can you still write about the same thing? You know, when Caitlyn came out, those stories much, so much of it focused less on what the community was actually doing in the work that it was and more on, oh, wow, that's like, how can we now talk about the Kardashians through the scope of this? And so I think if we get out of outside of the trend and the headline and the clicks, then I think we could do a little bit more and great work. Um, so that's a great place to start. Great. We had a question here. Yeah. Um, your name I and your school. Um, my name is Alexandria. I'm also um, an ambassador for the LGBT Center as well. Um, my question is, like, is it a trend? And what I say trend is, is Caitlyn Jenner a trend? Because when she came out, like, I saw so many girls, you know, just all of a sudden just say that, oh, I'm transgender, you know, like, all of a sudden. And I feel like, you know, there are so many average trans women, like me, myself, I'm a trans woman. And, you know, like we have, so, you know, the average trans woman, we go through so much, you know, we have to walk outside and we have to worry about, you know, random guys just coming up to us and just bothering us, you know, and like we, it's so much stuff we have to face, and, you know, and when you look at Caitlyn Jenner, yeah, like, you know, she glamour, you know, hair, clothes, or whatever. Like, we don't have that. Like, me, myself, I don't have that, you know? And when I speak, I speak for many trans women, you know, that, you know, I'm around. And, like, I just feel like it's very disrespectful when, you know, you have a, a trans woman coming in. God knows I respect Caitlyn Jenner. But, like, when do we get a, like, when do we get out of just, you know, thinking about, the beauty and the hair and the clothes like it's so much more to being a trans woman than that and like I just feel like you know how 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 can we change you know prostitution how can we change you know um you know homelessness yeah. like it's so many trans women living yeah. on the street and like you know I walk down Santa Monica a lot and like I see so many you know prostitutes out there and you know they 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 give their body up for money and sex and they can't find you know employment like mm -hmm. what how can we confront that yeah are we trivializing what trivializing well, it's all a, a trickle down right so it's like i used to think so for example with uh with marriage equality i used to think okay that would be you know we don't have the same rights everyone deserves the same rights blah 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 right i didn't realize until i learned a lot about it that you know, that's, that's up here, okay? And then because someone is gay or bi or trans or whatever, let's say they're in their home and they come out to their their parents, their parents say, well, no fucking way, you can't live here. And then they're homeless or on the street. And then you find out, well, 40% of all teens on the street are LGBTQ and they're on the street because of this. So you realize that what seems like just like a political issue, just like you're talking with prostitution, like 
that's a huge issue because there aren't tons of options for those people. And so if there were more options, like what you were talking about, if you know you were trans and you weren't going to get fired or you could get hired and you weren't going to be discriminated against in the workplace, then so many more people wouldn't be on the street and have to find work that way. To what you said about Caitlyn Jenner, I, I don't know what that would, you know, that must be such an interesting position for you because it's like you deal with that on a very real level. And then this person comes out and it's so exciting and it's popular and everyone's like, I love trans people. And you're like, yeah, you're probably like, yeah, where the fuck were you? Trans yeah, a year ago, before. you know. Before, before, like, totally. Just called us, um, he and, yeah. And she I'm like, sure like you've no. met like people that literally once probably made fun of you and now think you're cool. And like that's a terrible feeling. But the only thing that I could say, and it's just speaking from someone who's like, you know, completely amazed by, you know, your journey is that's awesome that you, you went through that. I mean, it, it, I'm sure it was you know, many terrible elements for you, but that's incredibly character building and amazing. And things get easier. And I'm sure, you know, you know, it's like my grandfather who went through so much crap just to get to America, and probably looked at me and was like you little brat, like, <laughs> you know, you'll grow up and see people that are, you know, have no struggle transitioning because that'll hopefully be the world we live in and you'll know that you paved the way for that. And so I think there's frustration, but it's also really amazing. We have another question. It's hard to see with lights. Hello, so my name is Jalen Reynaud, and um, I attend Washington Preparatory High School. Um, and I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with the area, but it's not a great area. And I, too, everyone doesn't know, like, my life, but I, too, identify as a trans woman, and I live a double life. Like, I can go out and, um, like, you know, and do what I do, and, I mean, like, people really won't notice. Like, you know, I, like, I've been to my job, and, um, like, they wouldn't notice me, but it's like, I like do live the double life and I understand like um, how hard it is to like really truly be yourself like with no support. Like my mom is like so against it. Like and I'm 17 and a senior in high school. So I still have like plan like plans and, and goals and like I wanna go to college. Like I wanna be um, like a support system for those and be strong for those who are going through the same thing that I'm going through who can't like be themselves 24 seven because are afraid of what is going to happen and who like might try to kill you or this and that. So I do what I do um, because um, kind of like, I'm trying to be a rock for uh, other people who are scared to put on that wig or scared to put on that lipstick or that makeup or really put on that bra or that crop top or those jeans because of who is going to I mean, I, like, I don't mind, like, this is my thing, well, like, I just want to get to a question here. We have a few other hands I want to get to, but. I, know, I, I have a question, though. But my thing is, like, where, like, where do you go? Like, what can you do, what can we do to kind of give ourselves that, like, you know, like, well, what do you, what can I do to kind of, like, open it up for people, like, to make it easier or in a way, in a sense, to, like, for those people who can't live, like, what did you suggest, um, you know, how can we help? Because, like, Caitlyn Jenner, like, I, I know I don't have those. I do have um, Kaiser Care, so, like, things are covered, but I know I don't have the money and all the, like, the surgeries it takes to be that beautiful. I mean, so it really, so it's, it's hard. Like, how can normal people who it wasn't okay before, Caitlyn it's probably still isn't okay, who are scared to be themselves 24-7 because of what can happen, like, you know, like, when does it stop? Like, when, like, is it okay for transgenders to have a, a nine to five or a normal job or be a big figure, but it doesn't have millions? Like, you know, like, like when, when are we gonna have our chance? Like, the real people, us, like, black. Well, I think it's starting by you telling your story. I mean, the fact that you are standing in a room of all of these people in, com in front of some people who are complete strangers to you and speaking your truth about the fact that you cannot be who you know yourself to be all the time, 24 hours a day, in front of everyone. Like, I want to create a world where you don't have to live that way, and that's why I do what I do. Um, and so you telling your story and so many other people telling their stories helps people like me 
have the have the the will in the community to be able to uh, do things like we did in West Hollywood, where all the single uh, single occupancy bathrooms, uh, if you just walk in and it's it's a oney, some people call it, you it's uh, they're gender neutral and they have signs on them that say that throughout the whole city. Um, we are able to bring forward legislation and talk about these issues in a real way like you are because you're telling your story and, and you're speaking your truth. And it's a responsibility of people like me and all of us up here who have a place in any sort of public realm to be able to create a world where you feel safe. And um, organizations like the LA LGBT Center, like the Trevor Project, uh, provide resources um, uh, hotline for you to call just to know that somebody's there for you to be able to talk about these things because the truth is even though sometimes we can feel really 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 alone in our story we're never alone there's always somebody there and whether you're calling a hotline or you're remembering this very moment where you told this story and this whole room is holding you in our intention right now knowing you and loving you for exactly who you are just remembering that moment that it was okay for you to tell your story here that that's that's the world that we're trying to create, and that's uh, that's why I think we're all here having this conversation. I also, just really quick, I want you to do a really big favor for me. Sweetie, I want you to hold your head up and remember, you are so beautiful. And don't use words like normal. That is not, that's so not true. So not true. And you don't even realize it. You don't even realize it, but every day you being who you are, you're helping somebody else. They might not have the courage to tell you that, but you are. Trust me, trust all of us when we tell you that. Like, you have to believe that. And you have to walk in that truth every single day because on top of you saving yourself, you're saving other people and you're educating other people. So just remember that. We have, a question. Okay. we have a question there and we have one down here. Oh, I got the mic. My name is Sunshine Cavaluzzi. I'm very proud to be a social science teacher at El Dorado High School in Orange County. And I'm sure you guys are as inspired as I am that we have a room full of high school students who are here on their Friday afternoon. I mean, in our case, their summer Friday. It's their last day of summer vacation. And I'm sure that's true of some of the other students because they're passionate about activism in all shapes and sizes. And I would say, as activists yourselves, what's the best piece of advice you ever got about activism, or what would you tell your high school self about being an activist if you, can, if you could now, so that you can tell their high school selves your sort of best wisdom about creating change or being an activist? Well, since I'm just fresh out of high school, well, two years ago, I like to say, don't stop advocating for what you believe in. Do not, because it could take many ugly twists and turns. Some things you may have believed in before, you're not so sure about now, but you need that extra oomph and confirmation on it. Do not give up. I used to be part of GSA in high school. Not many people liked it. Some people only came for the pizza at lunchtime. <laughs> but there were just about three of us <laughs> who stayed to the end. And when it was disbanded the next year, senior year, I fought tooth and nail just to get it back so the next year's and the year after that, they can continue to have it. And from what I hear, they still have it. And it's not just GSA anymore. They include all the alphabet soup of LGBTQ. <laughs> so what I have to say is do not stop advocating for whatever you believe in. And also, remember that people are people no matter how they identify. Because at the end of the day, we're human. We may, we may not think we look human, but we're human nonetheless. Sage, you and I had a great conversation before, and we talked about some of the untold stories of this movement. Tell us a little bit about the issue that we discussed that needs to be elevated and we just aren't talking about. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> there have been 19 confirmed deaths of trans women of color this year alone so far, from January to now. And there are many more, but these are the ones that have been shown light, like the spotlight shown on me. These are the only ones that people have known about. There needs to be stopped, there needs to be more awareness, there needs to come to a complete halt, or at least educate people more. As well as, um, I believe that Jack said, 40% of homeless youth on the street are LGBTQ. Homeless youth only take about 10% of the population. Last numbers were 2.5 million children in 2013. How is it that we take up 40% of that? In any given year, I got this from dailynews.com, so don't really quote me, quote them. Uh, <laughs> they said in any given year, there are more than 100,000 children, 17 and under, that are homeless. That's 40,000 LGBT youth. That is ridiculous. 
and the top number and the top reasons why taken out of surveys was because of family. There was no acceptance, or there was acceptance, but it came with conditions. Oh, I love you, but you can't stay here. Oh, you're gonna turn your brother or sister gay. Oh, it's contagious. Oh, it's this, this, and that. At the center, there have been stories of parents dropping off their children there and leaving them because they don't know how to deal with it. And it's just going on and on, and we're trying to do something about it. I don't know if you may have heard, but Cindy Lopper has come up with the project, the 40 to none, bringing down that very huge statistic of 40% down to absolutely zero. And you can look that up for it in our project. Great. We have a question down here. Probably one or two questions before we wrap up. Um, hi, my name is Amir. I'm from Washington with Ms. Cole. Um, I'm nervous. Um, it's okay. okay. I'm nervous too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so I know you guys have been talking about the 40% in people, children, teenagers being um, homeless. Um, and I just, so I wanted to ask, I know the LGBTQ community does a lot to help people, but how come it doesn't do a lot to help when kids come out to their parents? Because I had an issue coming out to my parents, and I know people who have had issues coming out to their parents. I know somebody who got kicked out of their home. And I don't think there's enough, like, talk about coming out to your parents because people just don't know how to do it, and then they have to live with fear of coming out to their parents or... It's okay. Other people, and it's... Um, it's because I saw him cry, and I feel like crying. Um, but it's—I just wanted to know, like, why isn't that like super talked about? Because it's like really important. I think someone can interject in the audience for us, real quick. Martel. Hello, how y'all doing today? Um, Just—I'm um, one of uh, the mentors for um, our wonderful sage here. He's my right hand man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just wanted to talk about that. I think the challenges um, in, in all of our public being able to provide these resources that are readily available for our youth because there are resources out there that help with parents having conversations with um, their, their children about coming out. There's, um, the LA LGBT Center has a wide wraparound of services for that. So there's like Project SPIN, which actually works with LAUSD in providing these types of resources to give to the, the students, to give to the teachers, having these conversations with parents. I think one thing as a community, we need to, um, even addressing with the um, young woman sat there in the back. Um, having that opportunity to, to mobilize with your peers, mobilize as students, you're a strong force, you can do that with no regard. Um, mobilizing together, getting those resources for each other and making sure that you're taking care of each other, having those conversations with your teachers to therefore have conversations with administration, to therefore have conversations with the families, the PTAs that some of the schools have. So I think that's one thing just to keep in regards um, to where to get that information at and knowing that there is information out there and there's resources, but finding it and making sure it's available for your students, for your peers, is the biggest key that's really missing a lot of. But as students, you can work on that and you can get that together and really mobilize. I'd love to learn from you. What, where would be a good place for you to uh, learn about those kinds of resources? Because it's clear that they exist, but it sounds like you, didn't, you don't know where, where they are for you. So like, where do you go to get information? Um, just so we can make suggestions to some of those organizations about where they should put, be sharing that kind of information. Like, um, um, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe like commercials or something? I mean, people watch TV, magazines, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Um, Got it. Yeah, like, cool. Hmm? I know, but I mean, like, Maybe just a show or a segment on coming out to your parents and being gay with your family, not gay or lesbian, trans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I get you. <laughs> Sorry. I get you. But like, yeah, just to talk about that because mm -hmm. it's hard to come out to um, like parents who don't want to really accept you. Like my grandma, she's seventy. I have no idea how old she is, but <laughs> it's like I, I came out to her and everything changed. She doesn't trust me. She doesn't trust where I go. She didn't want me to act like that around my brother for a while because she was afraid that, I don't know, like I'd influence him and in the way I talk and she kind of like restricts me on a lot of stuff. And my friend's parent, she kicked her out her house and she was in like a foster home for like a really, really long time and I wanted to take her in, but 
I couldn't even ask my grandma to do that because I knew she would have a lot to say. But I don't know. I think that um, maybe if kids could have more access to it and they knew where to go to get information, then I think it would be a little easier. And for the parents, too, because, like, things are different now. I don't know. I'm going to sit down because I'm going to start crying. <laughs> so we have one last question up here. Uh, yeah, my name is... Two last questions. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, one thing real quick, though, about what you were saying is it's also, there is a time factor. So it's like, not your grandmother, because I hope she lives forever, but, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and I don't mean this to sound terrible, but a lot of, uh, a generation needs to sort of die off. You know, I mean, my grandfather, I talked to him about civil rights, and it was like, he was great, and he, he marched with Martin Luther King in Washington, he was an amazing person, but you know, most people of his time didn't think that. And then, you know, two generations later, me, it's like, I can't even imagine, well, actually, I can. We have horrible race issues in America. But as far as equal rights, at least on paper, I can't imagine what that would be like. And so if I have kids one day, they'll say, what was it like when gay people and, and trans people had less rights? And I'll be like, well, this is, you know, I'll, I'll try to explain it. They'll be like, that's crazy. It makes no sense to me. So there's, you know, as far as you talking about also, um, an, an older generation and them learning how to speak to their kids and kids coming out like, you know, if you have kids, you would know what to say, you know, because you're from a generation, you are, are who you are. So there is a time factor that I even think in the past five years, we've seen how amazing it's gotten as a certain group of people have gotten older. And like I meet kids now who are in high school and it's like they wouldn't even think to, to, to give a shit what, what someone's sexuality is or how do I de identify like it's just totally fine. And 10 years ago when I was in high school, it was like hell for that. So time is really important. So we'll go here and then we'll go here. Yes, thank you very much. I'm, I'm uh, Raul Preciado, a teacher at Washington Prep High School. You know, as a heterosexual male myself, what can we, and when I say we, I mean the heterosexual community, <laughs> um, do to become real allies, real allies to the LGBT community because I, I believe that that's one of the big obstacles that, that exists. That, you know, I can't be your ally because, oh, all of a sudden I'm going to be called gay or, or whatever. So w what is it that, that, how can we form alliances? What type of alliances? And what kind of real things that we, we can do and the gay community, LGBT, can reach out to the heterosexual community and, and do projects and things that promote well, a more tolerant environment. I'm, I'm straight, and, and I always think to myself that you have to look at it like if, if you had less rights and were treated a certain way because you're straight, what would you want your gay and trans and bisexual friends to do? You want them to, to care, and you want them to, to talk about it and the big, the most important thing is to listen because one thing that can happen is sometimes, you know, when you get really fired up about an issue, you don't want to take on someone else's pain. You want to, it's still about them. You have to listen and, and try to understand what someone else is going through and, and truthfully just do whatever you can. I think, I think the most important thing that we can do as people is establish ourselves as like these, these like cells where, you know, making it clear to your friends and your family and everyone you work with that you think a certain way and that you are not homophobic and you're not transphobic and you're not racist and you're all these things and that you don't tolerate that in any way and when things happen in the world, you really give a crap. Um, that, that's so important, just the people around you and especially as you, do you say you're a teacher? Yes, sir. So, I mean, you're in a massive position of power. You're, you know, creating an environment. So, so it's, I, I, I'm a musician, right? So at my concerts, I have gender neutral bathrooms and that's not something that is all over the world, but just like you have a classroom and I have a concert, you have to take your space, whether that's, you know, you're talking to 10,000 people, a classroom of kids or one person at a dinner table, you have to take your space and say, all right, the world is really messed up, but in this space, there's no discrimination. You can be whatever you want in this space. So as a teacher, I think that you have like an amazing ability to say like this classroom, you can be whatever you want. And maybe in another classroom, you might deal with some crap, but not in this classroom. I'd like to add on to that. Um, back at Fairfax High, we actually had several, basically all the classrooms. They would have a rainbow triangle in their door, a decal. 
And I also let um, the students know it's a safe space. It's called the Project 10. I don't know if the name has changed by now, but it's a safe space for um, the students to go if they want to talk about certain things. Um, if they wanted to just go hang out there, but they knew they were able to go there without any type of discrimination based on how they identify or who they like or what their orientation is. And also as a teacher, um, speak with other teachers, not necessarily about the students, but necessarily about the experience that, that the students may have went through and see how those can either be changed, how can they um, be formulated into whatever those things called plans, lesson plans. <laughs> It's been years, I'm sorry. <laughs> and try to see how you could just make it safe for all students, especially LGBTQ is a sensitive, we're a sensitive pack. It's, it's hard because people think they need to tiptoe around us, but really just treat us as we are. Treat us as, our, treat us as your students. Treat us as humans. Treat us like you would someone at a bus stop. You don't want us to sit next to you, it's fine. I don't like people sitting next to me because I have anxiety, but not because, you know, um, homophobic or xenophobic or all that other jazz. Last question right here. Uh, yeah, my name is Sean Bell and I'm an ambassador with the Youth Center. And my question is actually for the mayor. Um, recently, I was uh, working a job um, that showed severe discrimination to me and my friend um, and said that we only hire real women who is a transgender. Um, how can we go about, um, instead of, I mean, also working on getting transgender women able to work but also, how can we get it to where the job that you know maybe discriminates against them is punished for it? Because that should be a focus. Because if a job is afraid of punishment, then they're not going to discriminate. Mm -hmm. So, and I quit my job due to that discrimination. They told me that I brought my. They had me bring my friend in there for an interview. Knew she was trans transgender. Brought her in there, made fun of her, and when she left, said we only hire real women. What were you thinking? I'm so sorry for that experience. Thank you for telling your story. Um, the, uh, the most specific thing, the most specific answer I can give you um, is there's a bill called the Employment Non-Discrimination Act that's in Congress. And that, um, that to me, I know that we've been taking on a lot of battles at the national level, but to make every workplace safe uh, under the law, um, to me, that's the, a real game changer. I think marriage was huge, and um, especially because of the connotation of marriage and a lot of religious undertones and all of that, that was really important. But being able to make every workplace safe, that workplaces are required to hold certain values, I think is really important. And so um, let's, let's get together. Let's, uh, let's write to our Congress people. Let's sit down and have meetings to educate them about why they need to pass this bill, because it's essential. Um, in our community, we work with our Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce uh, is sort of a collection of all of the different businesses in our city. And, um, and so it's a business community and we educate them on our city's core values and we ask them to educate their businesses about our city's core values because otherwise they're not gonna be so successful in our community because we won't patronize them. Um, so uh, that's another organization, your local Chamber of Commerce to help educate businesses. Um, you know, unfortunately, shaming does a really good job of making people change their minds about what they're doing. So uh, raising your voice about what that business is, if you feel comfortable to do that, and letting people know in your community what that business was and what your experience was, and helping to spread the word about how you were treated. And, you know, I, I think you, that... You, you have a duty to do that. I wouldn't want to eat at whatever restaurant that is. You should, you should stand outside there with a sign that says this place doesn't hire trans women. Yeah. And then, yeah, you have a lot of power to do that. Or go to Yelp, you know, Yelp, Yelp it, they'll, they're ready to go down real quick. Let's give our panel a round of applause. <laughs> and, and give yourselves a round of applause. It's a really great audience, great questions. So before we, uh, before we wrap up, we have, are we taking a picture here? Yeah. All right, we're just gonna act like we're being casual here and not posing for a photo. Um, it didn't occur to anyone to do that while we're actually doing the panel? No? No? We're just we're waiting now? But I also want to say, I, I get called out a lot for being a young elected official and just get called out for being young in general, so I assume that probably happens to you too. And um, I just want to tell you, what you have to say matters now. 
I get told a lot, you know, when you're older, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. Or when you're older, you'll be able to do this, that, or the other. But your voice matters now. You're part of a generation that's growing up in, you know, a technological age and with so many things that are available to you that a generation or two ahead don't even understand. So you're actually, you have a huge leg up. Um, so just so you know and just so you hear it, um, people who hold my seat understand that you actually have a lot more power than anybody gives you credit for. And I, I just want you to own that power and use it to your advantage because we can't make change without you. So This is a politician, by the way. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Right? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, but are we, are we good? Before we adjourn, we have a very special performance from Woo! Jack Antonoff who will close out our panel. So thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, Woo! Jack Antonoff. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah? So is everyone in high school? Or oh, not everyone. Five years out? I'm like a thousand years out. So there's two high, there's El Dorado, right? Man, just say where someone goes to school and they go nuts. Um, Washington? El Dorado? Washington? <laughs> Are there other high schools? Did I miss one? <laughs> um, Pacific Hills. Pacific Hills. That's another thing. You can say something, and then you can say it and induce your voice, and you get more of a reaction. <laughs> um, I'm going to play a song. Is anybody coming to the thing tonight? Yeah, it's like one person. I mean, maybe we can invite more of them, but yeah. The guys, just accost that guy if you want to try to come tonight. <laughs> um, you guys are really I incredible. It was so nice to uh, be able to talk to you. Um, I'm going to play a song called I Want to Get Better. Are any of you guys musicians? Yeah, I know you're a great singer. I was at their center today, and this guy's an amazing country singer. Seriously. If anybody uh, works on country music, you should meet him after and make music together. Hey, I hear the voice of a preacher from the back room Calling my name and I follow just to find you Trace the faith to a broken down television And I put on the weather Yeah, I train myself to give up on the past Cause I'm frozen time between hearses and caskets Lost control when I panicked at the acid test I wanna get better While my friends were getting high And chasing girls down parkway lines I was losing my mind Cause the love, the love, the love, the love, the love that I gave I Wasted on a nice face in a blaze of fear, I put a helmet on a helmet Counting seconds through the night, I got carried away So now I'm standing on the overpass Screaming at myself, hey, I wanna get Didn't know I was lonely Until I saw your face I wanna get better And better, better, better I wanna get Didn't know I was broken Till I wanted to change Wanna get better and better, 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 I want to get To my room where there's girls on the ceiling Cut out the pictures and I'll chase that feeling Of an 18-year-old that didn't know what loss was Now I'm a stranger And I'll miss the days of a life still permanent More than the years before I got carried away Now I'm standing on the interstate screaming at myself Hey, I want to get better No, I was lonely Till I saw your face I want to get better And better, better, better I want to get Didn't know I was broken Till I wanted to change I want to get better And better, better, better I want to get better Cause I'm sleeping in the back of a taxi Screaming from my bedroom window Even if it's gonna kill me Heights, was that it? Was that it? Pacific Hills, sorry. 
I was going to yell it, then I couldn't remember it. <laughs> Pacific Hills. You're, you're, you're walking right into it. Watch this. Pacific Hills! See? <laughs> You know that I woke up this morning early before my family From this dream she was trying to show me How a life can move from the darkness Yeah, she said they get better So I put a bowler where I should have put a helmet And I crashed my car cause I wanna get carried away Now I'm standing on the overpass screaming at the cars Hey, I wanna get Didn't know I was lonely Until I saw your face I wanna get better Better, 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 I want to get Didn't know I was broken Till I wanted to change I want to get better Thank you guys.